And welcome back to our channel. We are Team Apple and we are Ghana bound. Today we are heading off to get little lady's yellow fever jab done. So we thought we'd take you along with us. And at which point I'm going to ask the um, nurse to also give us all the information about the vaccines and malaria tablets and everything else that you need to know to be able to go to Ghana. We have all already had our um, yellow fever done so myself my husband and our boy so it's her turn to get this last bit done um, obviously she's um, just about to turn two years old so she should be old enough now to get it all done and dusted we are going to spread out her vaccines over the year we've given ourselves lots of time because she's just a baby so we don't want to make it too much of a horrific um a horrific thing for them to expect so yes yeah, stay tuned please forgive the forget it but you broke my heart i'm sorry my command on the punch in back now bomb me punch 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 come in and go never so see me for out of the appointment to the car and they wouldn't do her yellow fever jab it was there were several reasons they gave why they wouldn't do it um, a couple of which are that um, they don't like to give it really nearly because it's got quite severe side effects so it's quite a strong medication so they like to give it only if they know you are definitely attending or going to that country and because we aren't going for you know about a year or whatever they think they'd rather wait till she's definitely going i'm not too sure on that reasoning but that is what it is and the other reason is she's just literally under two years old and babies aged nine to two years um might need a booster after 10 years so they're saying just wait hang on till after she's two in a few days and then do the vaccination so massively disappointed that was a long way an hour and a half to go to not get it actually done um i kind of understand the reasoning but not a fan of it i'm going to get this little lady home and then i will talk you through all the awesome information i got today about the vaccines hi everybody so b and i have come home now and we have finished our adventure so we had to drive all the way to Cambridge to go to the travel clinic. There was a clinic um, about 20 minutes away from us here, but it's closed because of COVID. So we've had to travel all the way in to the other side. It was not worth it because we didn't get to actually give her the vaccination. I've given the reasons why before. However, a really nice nurse, um, Poppy, thank you Poppy, um, said she would be happily take the time to sit down with me. Hang on, washing machine's finishing. So Bobby said she was happy to sit down with me and explain for you guys what you need to do and how you need to get vaccinated for Ghana, depending on whereabouts in Ghana you're going to live, and also talking a little bit at the end about malaria tablets, so stay posted. I'm going to do this in three phases because there is actually... A vaccination that you need to get done before you enter Ghana there are some that are recommended and there are some that they say you should consider but you don't really need to get or not everyone needs to get the first one you must get yellow fever before you can enter Ghana 
Ghana requires you to have a certificate. It's a little yellow card that actually lets you enter into the country. It's not something you can get in and then um, go and get down. I think you have to actually get it done from the country you're in. I will also note that I'm talking about the UK only. So if you live anywhere else, please look into um, what vaccinations, immunizations you need to get in that particular country. Also, I am not pro anti-vaccination, anti-vac, whatever. We are just doing what's right for our family. Your choice is yours and you can choose whether you get any of these done. However, yellow fever is a must if you want to enter Ghana. There may be some exceptions for medical reasons, otherwise, you're not to get it. At this point, I will mention side effects that are possible with yellow fever. I think it's quite a few, but I'll mention the ones she explained to me. The risk is particularly high if you are age 60 or above to get liver damage. And generally, the rest of the population will get headaches and also a fever from three days onwards of having had the vaccination. It can take up to two weeks for you to actually get some of these symptoms, but you definitely want to look more and read more into what the side effects can be to prepare yourself. Especially if you've got children, if you know you've got to prep for three days worth of a fever or feeling unwell, you may not want to send them to nursery or something after that. You can get yellow fever from the age of nine months. And then you need to note, between nine months and two years, if you get the vaccination at that age, then you will very likely need to get a booster after 10 years. If you get the vaccination after you are two, it is unlikely, in fact, you will have immunity for life. Age nine to two, 10 years of immunity and then a booster is likely. And then two years upwards, valid for life. Back in 2016, um, they, the world decided that yellow fever would actually last for life. Before that, we used to get them done um, every 25 years. So some of you may have that on your yellow, yellow fever card but um, you can actually get clinics at a cost to give you an updated version of that card saying it is valid for life, but the world does, the world accepts it as life from now. The sun disappeared then, so I have stepped back into the light. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too dark. Next, we will look at the four vaccinations that are recommended for you to take. Hepatitis A, typhoid, polio, and tetanus. Tetanus and polio are given as a routine vaccination in the UK when we're babies. So those you don't need to worry about too much unless you haven't had them done. And then we've got hepatitis A, which is transferred through foods and touching of things without washing hands and then consuming those things. Obviously in the COVID era, we are all washing our hands. Happy birthday to you. You can safely take hepatitis A from the age of one year upwards. It comes in two shots, as in two injections. The first one um, you take, and then the second one you, you get given six months to a year later, regardless of what age you are. Typhoid lasts for three years. You can safely take it from the age of two years upwards. The next set of vaccinations are the ones that you need to consider getting done. So they're not essentials. They are very dependent on whereabouts you're gonna live in Ghana, for example, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, if you're volunteering with wild animals, or if you're staying simply in Accra, in the city. Please bear in mind, I cannot pronounce any of these, so I will just say them as I read them, and I will write them down so you can actually find out what I'm saying as well. The first one of these is diphtheria. This one is covered in the UK as baby. Hepatitis B, which you can get or you can catch, um, it's blood transmitted, so through um, tattoos, skin piercings, scratches. It can also be transmitted through unprotected sex. Careful. Rabies, just a note about rabies, guys. She said, even if you get vaccinated for rabies, you can still catch rabies. The difference is how they treat you after you catch it. If you take the vaccination, you simply get top-up vaccinations. If you don't take the vaccination, you get bitten by a rabid dog, you then get an or a blood treatment. Meningocal, gocal, gocal, menin, meningocal meningitis. 
got it. Apparently there's been a recent outbreak in the Upper West Side of Ghana. It is 75% to 95% effective and lasts five years. Cholera, you can take from the age of two years up and you require it if you're gonna be in an area where there's unsanitized water or open water, basically areas of poor sanitation. She did say, if you're staying in the city, that is very unlikely you're gonna get cholera. But again, it's something to consider if you're gonna be traveling up and around all of Ghana as well. The last one is tuberculosis or TB. Um, many of us have had it as babies and children. And for those of you who don't, it is one for you to consider. Lastly, I'm gonna talk about malaria tablets. As, you, as some of you may know or may not know, there are several types of malaria tablets. We have doxycycline, malarone, larium, and chloroquine. Chloroquine, apparently, from what the nurse said today, um, isn't as effective as we thought. The um, mosquitoes in Ghana have actually become quite resistant to it. These things are tough. These mosquitoes in Ghana are tough, I tell you. I knew there was something special about them. So if you are choosing chloroquine, please bear in mind that they are quite resistant to it, so it may not be as effective from protecting you from malaria. For your babies and your children, they now have pediatric malarone, which comes in the form of a tablet. The amount they give your child depends on your child's weight, not their age. So they'll obviously weigh them and check them before they can recommend any to you. I made a point to ask, okay, because we are planning to live there for definitely a few years, we wanted to know um, if it is safe to take um, anti-malarial tablets and medication for all of our lives while we're living in Ghana. She said, yes, it is safe. It is still your choice to take it or not. And like I said before, I am not pro, anti-vax, anything like that. But do know, if you do want to take it, apparently it is safe to do so all your life. I hope you found this helpful today and that my journey was not in vain. Um, please give me your experiences of vaccinations, your malaria tablet experiences. Guys, I ended up in a hospital because I had such bad tummy problems from doxycycline. But that's another story. Um, and also, if you've got any more questions, I can always ask the vaccine nurse when I see her for our actual appointment where my daughter actually gets the yellow fever vaccination. So thanks again. Please don't forget to subscribe. Apparently like 60% of you have watched our um, channel but haven't subscribed. So take the second right now and click the button. Thank you. And then please comment and like and share. See you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>